Good afternoon and welcome to the UNC Greensboro Soccer Stadium in Greensboro, North Carolina for the Division Three Women's Soccer Championship game. The two top teams in Division Three square off to see who will add another walnut and bronze trophy to their trophy case. I'm Dave McHugh alongside Ira Thor. Messiah comes in 22-1-2 and two, an unanimous top pick and ranked team in the country. The Falcons are riding a 21-game unbeaten streak, but have had to withstand back-to-back -back PK shootouts in the quarterfinals and semifinals to get here. The Cinderella Carnegie Mellon nearly knocking off Messiah in the semifinals. But the Falcons are back for their 10th national championship game, looking for their sixth national title and their first in four seasons. William Smith is back in its first championship game since 2013. Their third in program history. Their last two trips resulted in championships. The unanimous number two team is Messiah's Kryptonite. The Herons have beaten the Falcons the last three times the teams have faced one another, including a 2 0 win in early September. The William Smith has taken care of its NCAA opponents as well, winning all but one of their tournament games by multiple goals, including knocking off Pomona pitcher 2 0 in yesterday's semifinals. It's a matchup of the best of the best here on NCAA.com. And of course, yesterday, Ira, it was two thrilling games between these two teams and their opponents, starting off with Carnegie Mellon nearly knocking off the Falcons. Yeah, I think Messiah yesterday learned a little bit about themselves, how to play with adversity, because they have not been challenged like this until the quarterfinal round. They have problems now with two of their uh, first team All Americans. One is out, one is banged up. A high scoring team, where's the production going to come from today? Late goal. Uh tied this one up in overtime it nearly ended with Carnegie Mellon getting a goal but it would come down to PK shootouts they would go up 3-1 here and the goalie Ewing came up with a big save to end it in four rounds that's how Messiah moved on how about William Smith I wouldn't say it was an easier game but it certainly didn't have to go to PK shootouts the Sage Hens of Pomona Pitzer made them earn it early on it almost a defensive header Ira and Pomona Pitzer then had to withstand the Herons attack. Yeah, and William Smith, after a 0-0 game at the half, was able to find some solutions to beat the, arguably the top goalkeeper in Division Three, scoring two in quick fashion to take a 2-0 lead and pretty much cruise from there. Herons moving on, as we said, to a championship game here in 2013, well, first since 2013. Again, he's Iro Thor, I'm Dave McHugh. You see the Herons, they'll be in their road four screen uniforms with white numbers and trim and you see their coaching staff talking them up alice ann willibur is actually their head coach out of the brackport graduate of 74 in her 40th season 593 victories she's the first woman and coach to get to 400 to get the 500 she keeps us up she's going to be the first to 600 possibly she's got 136 losses and 59 ties as well her assistant coach, Chaz Allen from Ithaca, Al Locks, Wilson Medeiros, and Chip Carver. Head coach, as you see the goalies there quickly, Scott Fry from the Falcons. He's a graduate of Messiah. He's in his 20th season, 421 wins, 24 losses, 28 assists. Todd Bosbaugh is his assistant. Eric White, Holly Hoy, and Marissa Kennel also. And there you see the goalie in the defense for the Falcons. It's Lindy. Linda Ewing, the, the junior goalie from Palmyra, Pennsylvania, starting in her 25th game this season. The MAC second team selection, sixth in the country coming into the weekend in goals against average, 10th in save percentage. She actually has the program record third in both of those categories and has another year, obviously, under her belt. For the Herons, their goalie is Amanda Kessler. She's starting in her 24th game this season. She has got an 0-27 goal against average, and she is uh, fourth best in that category, and she played very well as well yesterday as we get ready to go here. Big challenge here today for Messiah. Yesterday, they had to play without Sonny Gelnovich, who's out for the year, obviously with an injury that occurred in the NCAAs against Trinity. Brooke Firestone, the other first-team All-American, along with Gelnovich, is banged up. She's playing a midfield role She's been hampered by hamstring issues. So who else? Kayla Herr, L.A. Lengager. Um, one of those two really is going to need to step up here against a defense for William Smith that does not give up goals. They gave up two against Stevens. That is uncharacteristic. And yesterday, Pomona Pitzer, despite a first-team All-American forward, couldn't find a solution to get past this defense. Talk about the starting lineups. We'll start with the white team and that's the Messiah in their home whites with the blue numbers and trim off the steel there. We'll do them in numerical order to make it easier for you at home. Shelby Bergen number seven, a freshman from Manassas, Virginia on the defensive end. Number nine Ellie Loniker, the 5'9 senior forward as you see the head coaching staffs there. Maddie Cole, the 5'4 junior midfielder from Lancaster, Pennsylvania. 
Number 11 is Kayla Herr, the 5'8 sophomore out of Lidditz, Pennsylvania. Number 12, Megan Mansfield, the 5'5 five five senior forward out of Mechanicsburg. Correction, that is Mansfield. Monko, I should have said, 5'6", the junior out of Dillsburg, Pennsylvania, number 14. Number 17, Emily D'Amico, the 5'6", senior out of Harrisburg, Pennsylvania. Number 21, Esther Seelan, the 5'9", sophomore out of State College, Pennsylvania. Number 23, Barb Foster, who's huge on defense yesterday, the 5'4", senior out of Baltimore, Maryland, and transfer of Lancaster Bible. And as you mentioned, number 25, Brooke Firestone, the 5'6", senior out of Dover, Pennsylvania. And we mentioned Lydia Young, the 5'6", junior out of Palmyra, Pennsylvania, in goal. For the Herons, out of William Smith. Number seven, Amanda Adams, a 5'4 junior forward out of Rowley, Massachusetts. Number eight, Sheila McQuellen, the 5'3 junior forward out of Natick, Massachusetts. Number 10, Eileen Rath. Eileen Rath, the 5'7 senior defense out of Lakeview, New York. Number 12, Julia Berg, the 5'8 freshman uh, midfielder out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Number 13, Katrin Berg, the 5'8 freshman forward out of Charlottesville, Virginia. Number 17, Julia Keo, the 5'6 junior forward out of Toronto, Ontario, got the game winner yesterday. She's got five of those on the season. Number 18, Genevieve Carpenter, the 5'6 senior out forward out of Cliff Kings Park, New York. Number 20, Elizabeth Moore, the 5'5 defensive senior out of Williamsville, New York. Number 22, Emile Sauver, the 5'7 senior defense out of New York, New York. Number 23, Myellen Martinez, the 5'6 junior defense out of San Sebastian, Spain. And number 30, Amanda Kessler, as we mentioned, 5'9 sophomore goalie out of Winchester, Virginia. And I appreciate both teams for not threatening too badly while we try to get through those starters. You know, right now, the two center backs for William Smith, Rath and first team All-American, Myellen Martinez. They are the ones that have the hardest task trying to control the middle of the field against a Messiah squad that has scored 87 goals this year. However, they needed a shootout and a late goal in regulation just to get past Carnegie Mellon. So you could say that they survived yesterday. They survived two How days in a row. do they come out less than 24 hours uh, later? What kind of energy do they have? Tired legs, long season. Well, uh, Messiah actually got a little longer break. They, they did have the first game our yesterday. They schedule yesterday with that double overtime. And <laughs> double sh in that in that shootout. It feels like less than 24 <laughs> hours because we didn't get out of here no. until 11 p.m. Talk about the conditions here. Fields in terrific shape, though it's not as green as everyone would obviously love to have the grass to be. But it is December, and, and it we is walked it. Before. It's beautiful shape. Yeah, we walked it's it. Soft. It's not giving away. Great shape. We'll mention low 50s. The sun a factor today. Light breeze right now. It's actually coming from the, our backs, your backs, if you're watching the game. But is, uh, the sun is a factor, and it's in the eyes right now of Kessler for the Herons. Uh, it is a low sun because it's December, and anybody in this game who's in that half is going to have to deal with it, especially Ewing in the second half. Otherwise, you couldn't ask for a better day for soccer. Both of the boxes are in great shape, especially yes. inside of the six, where you yeah. see a lot of the most important traffic. In fact, the field, which was kind of spongy yesterday as we did the pregame walk yesterday, has completely dried out. It, it was, it's a little soft, but the kind of soft that you want to play on if you're playing in a game yes. this time of year. And you know, you know, you'd love to have a little bit more grass, a little more grip of the grass. It, it plays more like an indoor you know, it feels like a little more indoor it, turf. It feels a little no bit grass. like field turf today. Yeah, there's no blades there. But, but it's the, not going to have the bounce like that. And yeah, the, and you get a foul in the middle of the field. It's got a great field. We should mention crowned. So the outsides, it will give way, especially on the far side. It will give away quickly on the far end uh, sideline. But what I will add is that they gra uh, take great care of this field. Um, For sure. Now the teams who play on this normally play at about a 116 by Let's call it 70. This is 120 by 75. Um, they also watered the heck out of this for weeks until two weeks ago. Temperatures got down in the 20s, and they had to stop watering the field as a result. We certainly don't want frozen tundra underneath. Last comment on the field, but something that was interesting when we did the pregame walk, the only area that's kind of worn out is where the Amherst bench was yesterday. <laughs> the Amherst men shot. No, it's a cross in front. Nice save. Unbelievable job of Ewing tracking that. Looked like a shot from my end. It ended up being a beautiful cross to the near side. I think that was McQuellen on the on the other end. 
And Ewing stayed on her line, stayed with it, and got in front. This is a beautiful effort. Yeah, left-footed shot. McQuillan able to run onto it. One-timer, but perfectly read there by Ewing. McQuillan leads the team with nine goals. She has five assists along with it. And, you know, nearly did the unthinkable there, scoring early against Messiah. I will say that left cross was gorgeous. The right foot getting around the defender to get that shot on goal even better. But I really like how Ewing kept on the line and closed off the post to keep that from going to the back of the net. So she read it well and saw McQuillan coming yep. through, so was able to hold her ground. Great first threat in this game. Goes to William Smith. This one a feed over. Big collision in the middle. That's head to head, folks. That is not a foul. I know the Messiah fans want it. Those are two players going for the ball, and if anything, it was uh, Loniker who actually initiated the contact. And so a good no call here, though I'm surprised both players got back on their feet. Taking another look at this 50-50 ball. Actually, it looked like it was shoulder, left shoulder yeah, it might have been to more head. Shoulders. But again, it's Loniker who actually kind of makes the contact. You don't see it there. Both of them go flying. Of course, Messiah fans want a call, but that's a good no call by our official, who's Nicole Green in the middle, Kayla Polanski and Anya Vogt on the outsides and Carlos Fernandez is our fourth. Carlos called the second semifinal yesterday. I think it was Kayla Polanski who called the uh, first semifinal, but I could be wrong. An all-female crew on the field for your referee in AR1 and AR2. They Pro had there. Appropriate for a national women's final. Had pretty good officiating here this weekend. We only had what two or three calls I can think of an entire day of yesterday that and, I, and I felt that yesterday especially in the last game which got kind of testy the Amherst I should say the uh, Tufts and Calvin game actually quite frankly the, Am the Amherst game before that against center was a little chippy as well that's With, about the only game I think the official got in a little over I, and, and, and that's not his fault I, I felt they that. did a good job, a great job of giving warnings when necessary yes. handing out cards when they realized that it had accelerated to a point where they had to get a talking to. I don't to. think anyone realized it would accelerate as fast as it did. <laughs> That's what I was trying to indicate. But good job all in all. We've been enjoying our time here in Greensboro. Third year we're here in a row. Cross in front. Nope, that got deflected. to go out of bounds. They're going to call it a corner, and it is a corner. So Messiah with its first threat of the game. They average coming into the weekend about seven and a half corners a game. They had six total yesterday, five of them all in the second half in this side of the field to be a threat. They usually use the foot of Maddie Cole. This will be an in-swinger. It's not going to swing. It's going to go to the 12. Foot on it. It's loose in the box and finally cleared after her got a look at it but couldn't do anything with it. Monko with it, cross in front. She can't do anything to the top of the box as it's cleared off by the defense, but Monko's going to get it back. Now she's going to go into the corner with it. Defender on it, tries to cut back, beats Adams with a deflection. Adams recovers, and Monko's still trying to do something with it. Monko v. Adams. Adams is going to try and shove her off this time, but Monko has her beat. Goal line, help defense comes over, out of bounds. We get another big collision, and it'll be a goal kick. As coming over was Julia Berg to shut off Monko. As you see Monko a little bit banged up coming out of that one. Yeah, and she got past Monko here, and the biggest save here was by Sauver, the second Sauver, team right. Liberty League selection, or two-time Liberty League selection, I should say, coming over and not allowing a second defender to get beat. I thought that was Berg. You're right, it was Sauver, 22, the, defend, the senior defender. I mentioned yesterday, I actually had a great conversation with her parents. While in the airport in Newark, they were flying down there from New York City to watch this championship. She was an academic All-American. Far side with it is Mansfield. Coming out, there's nobody in cage, but Messiah can't do anything out about it. Uh, I, it seemed like there, Kessler came out thinking the defender was actually a Messiah player because she played it as such when she had more time to handle it. They dodged that. Now coming the other way come the Herons. It's on the foot of Adams. She goes to the far side. Trying to build out of the attack here. Cannot do it. It'll be cleared off the 18. It appears as if Messiah is figured out some of its attacking woes from yesterday. They were nowhere near this aggressive in the first 10 minutes against Carnegie Mellon. They had more possession yesterday in that first time, but they weren't threatening. Again, back to, to Kessler. I do wonder if she thought the person in the box was a, an attacker. 
because she attacked that as if she didn't have a defensive help there. Check it out again. Ira, maybe you have a different read, but it just seems the way she attacks that, she doesn't realize that's a defender there. Gets away with it. You wonder if the sun had any impact there. Sure. It's, it's really hard to say, but ball comes across. And that's so one that, there. to me, I think you have to trust your defense there yes. to come that far outside the six is a gamble that I wouldn't take in a championship game. I think so. you got to realize Silvera is there. Sometimes the goalie's got to have their head on their on a swivel. There Look is away from so the little margin for error in a Agreed. game like this that's against true. a team like Messiah. I know that William Smith won the first time around 2 nothing, but that game on September 7th doesn't mean anything at this point. Nice touch on the breakout here for the Falcons. A good recovery by the Herons as we will be at midfield here. Should mention in that game, I know it's... You know, almost three months later, it doesn't have as actually it's exactly, it exactly three months. Over the top, real quick, punch out by Ewing. She had to play that one. Keo was tracking it. And just realized, yeah, it's exactly three months, September 7th, December 7th. Keogh but they won two that. nothing, the Herons did. And a very low shooting affair, just 12 yeah. to 7 in front uh, favor of William Smith. The fact that they held Messiah to seven shots is remarkable. Streaking down the corner, it's Cole. She goes shoulder to shoulder with Sever. Into the corner again, cut back. Cole again. She and Sever going to battle. Nice turn there from her. Her tries to feed Loniker, but it's going to end up just out of bounds for a goal kick. In that win for William Smith, two goals in that game, one by a player who is not in the lineup today. Seneca Blakely Armitage had the first goal in that game in 15 minutes in, and then Amanda Adams made it 2-0 just 56 seconds into the second half. Adams obviously in the lineup today has had a great year. A little short on the goal kick that time. Only gets about a third of the way up the field, but using the big boot of Raff to get it up to midfield. So you how the season has evolved at that time. William Smith was fifth in the country. Messiah was seventh. Yep. Now Messiah one two. Preseason seventh pick by the coaches association. As you mentioned, Messiah, the unanimous one, with both poles, and William Smith, the two. Feed through. Oh, well, tried to feed Keo with a cutter as well with McQuillan. Just missed it as Messiah stayed defensively come, uh, in shape there. Going to the far side, just missed the idea of going to McQuillan. McQuillan comes in with five goals in the tournament. She had the second half goal against Johns Hopkins in the quarterfinals. Second half goal in the 50th, or two goals, I should say, in the 50th minute alone against Stevens. Yes, two goals in the 50th minute against Stevens in the third round as well. She leads the team with nine goals. Yesterday, three points. The first game in the tournament she did not score. Correct. Ball being battled for at midfield. It's going to come this way. Trying to run onto it is Mansfield, and it'll go out of bounds, and Mansfield will retreat. You know, talking about McQuillan, her head coach, Allison, back, by the way. Allison Wilbur, describes her as you know, just a player who deals with pressure well. She doesn't look like she cares out in the field. She just does her job. That's Not impacted by the pressure at all. The Messiah ball as Severe kicks it out of bounds. So far, Messiah with a little bit more control here than William Smith. Miscommunication has to kick it uh, over her head is Martinez. I think she just expected Kessler to be coming out, but that's a long distance for Kessler to be coming out of. Stepping up and taking that, it's Monko. Monko retreats. Now she'll feed Cole. Cole v. Suver. We've seen this three times now. Suver is going to rub her off the ball and out of bounds. Probably got away with one there. Not a good pass, though. They're lucky. No. These teams so good that bad passes are more the product of the of the op opposition than it is about the skills of these players. That's going to go out. Yeah, that's me. Heron's ball. Good call. That one off of that one right off of Monko's foot at the end. Just surprised so far, Dave, by the miscommunication on a defense that is arguably the best in the country. I think 18 shutouts now on the year after the win against Pomona yesterday. Nine, uh, 19. 19 shutouts and 21 wins in 23 games. Well, 11 of their last 12. I don't know if nerves are a factor, 
probably are at a game like this. If you don't start talking, it could be one goal. That makes the difference. Step over. Oh, good idea there from Cole. She had to step over. She just couldn't get enough gas on it on the pass to get to Loniker on the cut through. Good ball by Martinez coming uh, forward. Just can't get up to it. Is Berg will feed it back to to uh, Foster. Foster, who came up big yesterday against Carnegie Mellon several times to thwart Tartan's attacks. Well, you just saw one of the strengths of this team. Obviously, the defense is what everybody points to, and deservingly so, but they are an excellent <laughs> squad. Sorry, Loniker just tried, gave a shove, got severe, and then her reaction was one of, no, I didn't do it. <laughs> then the whistle came. Sorry, I get a kick out of that stuff. Well, they are an excellent squad on the counterattack, as you saw there with Martinez pushing the ball up the field to Berg. And they have not relied on one or two people to be the heavy lifters offensively. Obviously, we talked about McQuillan and their nine goals. But, you know, statistically, nobody on this team is in double figures in goals, which is very uncommon for a team that makes the Final Four, let alone the national championship yeah. game. And 18 different women have scored this year. Yeah, William Smith very balanced as a unit. Falcons are pretty balanced themselves. They've got three players in double digits in goals in Loniker, Cole, and Firestone leading the way with 19. But the Herons, as you point out, no one in double figures. McQuillan at the lead with nine. What they have, 51 goals, or so 53 goals out of something like 18 goal scorers this season? Just said 18 and, and it 18? only allowed six. Yeah, that the six is the most impressive part, especially up against a team like Pomona Pitzer yesterday and Johns Hopkins. Messiah has only allowed nine, although they escaped a near loss in uh, the overtime period when they had to have a team save off the line in the OT. What's the most amazing thing is both teams needed team saves yesterday. Tartans needed one early against Messiah, and Messiah needed one or they wouldn't have been here. That by uh, D'Amico, D'Amico ended up standing on the line in an unsettled situation in the box. Nice cross to the far side. Oh, that looked better from my vantage point than it ended up being. It ended up being at the top of the 18. Looked much better off her foot. Uh, one thing you'll see with William Smith, they adapt to whatever Messiah or any opponent brings. The defense, obviously, everybody t is covering and now pushing up the field. You see the counterattack, but they do not panic, and that adaptability has gotten them to this championship game. Messiah coming in has scored an average of 3.52 goals against and only allowed three, uh, 0.36. William Smith coming in averaging 2.3 goals a game and allowing a, a NCAA third best 0.27. I should point out the Falcons fifth best defense in goals against average coming into the weekend. Falcons offense all in the top 10. Seventh in goals coming into the weekend. Fifth in assists. Sixth in shots per game. Sixth in shots, um, shots on goal per game. Save percentage is 12th best. William Smith save percentage is 14th best. When we say it's the best of the best taking each other on here, it's not just because of the rankings. Both these teams rank in the top 10 or 15 in a lot of statistical categories. And I think at the end of the regular season before this tournament began, if you could pick two teams you'd like to see just for the best quality game in a national championship, it would be these two, not because of the rankings, but because of not only the history of the program, but how they've been able to perform all year to date. Monco tracking back defensively, is able to stop the attack, then the feed up ahead. I think they were trying to hit, yeah, that is Cole, but Cole got hit from behind, so we get a free restart. Cole's gonna get hit a second time by Suver, but she'd already won the possession, so that's gonna stay in Heron's possession. Streaking up ahead, it's McQuellen. Onto the far side, into the shadows, the cross coming, no! Deflected out of bounds, or out, and, <laughs> sorry, out on top of the box. Out of bounds, coming out of the shadows sometimes. Even challenging for us. Now, great job by Monko defending. Two times in a row. Yeah, that's twice she snuffed out. Attacking opportunities in the last minute. Along with Esther Seelan on that cross, the 800 meter national champion. Talk about closing speed, right? it out again it's a great job of beating D'Amico here and it's wasting no time getting the cross seeing this from the opposite angle and this time it's Seelan who was able to react and get it out and on the steal it's Adams Adams a crossover 
now deflected by Messiah and out. And they will try and counter here. Trying to flip it over the defense, trying to run onto it is Firestone. Correction, that is Loniker. Firestone's the one that fed her. And that's going to be her role. The first team All-American yes. just cannot move like she normally does, but she can still create. Claire Pryor into the game. She only started in one game and came to the quarterfinals, but she's in the game now in her 26th appearance of the season. The 5 9 junior out of Montone, Pennsylvania. And for our friends at home, a transfer from Alvernia. And that's who she replaces, the aforementioned Firestone. You know, she's giving it all she can. Obviously, this is her last game. She's a senior, so plenty of time for that hamstring to heal. She's going to give it all she's got today. Nice pass down the line. Pass in front this time. Deflected away by the Herons. It's still in the box and now cleared as we've gotten halfway through this first half. 23 minutes remaining and nil-nil on the scoreboard. Not a lot of shots so far in this one either. Now, as you said, low shooting affair the first time around three months ago. It's starting to look that way again. Goalies have been active. Defenses have been active. But we haven't seen a lot of shots. Oh, Breyer actually landed on top of that ball, but somehow gets back to her feet. That looked awkward. Messiah will have another throw in as we get another sub. This Coming to the game will be Brianna Seip, 5'9", junior forward out of Jonestown, Pennsylvania. See her running in. She's going to replace Megan Mansfield. Mansfield, crazy thing about her is she didn't score in the regular season. But she's got five, uh, four goals to her tally. They've all come in the NCAAs. She actually was hurt in the first game of the season. Kind of goes to the theme, Ira, that this Messiah team all season long has, has been dealing with injuries and being banged up. And so they've been able to not only adapt to that, but also get maybe a little bit deeper than they normally would be. And not only did they miss, did she miss the first game of the season, the first meeting between these two teams, yep. Firestone and Mansfield were both out. So both targets did not play in that game. Yeah, the two players, I think one of the players who had one of the most shots for this Messiah team is not playing, if I remember correctly. But, oh, yeah, you mentioned earlier, Blakely Armitage. You know, listen when Cole, I, left foot. Yeah, that's an easy stop. You know, listen when I talk to you. No, you mentioned it. I just realized after that. So that was an easy stop there for Kessler, as you'll see it again, despite the sun. I don't think Cole got all of this as she had hoped. Gets a little under it. Yeah, and that's an easy read. Keeper doesn't even have to move. That's one of those where you sit there watching it coming in going, this is too easy. Like, what? what am I missing that's going to surprise me? Don't screw this up. Into the corner and headed out, but saved. Well done by Suver. Now she's, yeah, that's going to be a foul. Yeah, Loniger doesn't like it, but she put her, no matter how Suver reacts to it, she put her elbow right into the back. And even if Suver doesn't fall down, it's technically a foul. She's shoving off on Suver. Well, offensively right now, you have no Gelnovich. Firestone's right. out. Mansfield's out. Loniker's got to step up. Firestone out of the game currently and banged up. Correct. Into the corner, Loniker, who did have a quiet day yesterday. Cross in front. Ooh, Ooh. the English on that. As Breyer had a little bit of spin off of the foot. And that ball jumped to the right from the perspective of Kessler, but she stayed with it. Check it out again, Ira. You're going to see the skip here, almost like a golf chip off of the grass and the English. And, yep, Ooh. you took that last hop after the one bounce. Big adjustment there by the keeper, Kessler. Otherwise, you might have had an easy poke in. Trying to hit Keo. Keo was def had the attack deflected, and now McQuillan with another cross. This one deflects out of bounds for the first time today. The Herons will have a corner kick. They average about six and a half of these a game. Both teams only allowing about two per game. One of those factors is going to have to kind of give up. I can't, I, don't, I can't imagine these teams only having two corners each today. Far side with it. I can't tell who that is. Thank you. I get told it's Carpenter. She goes short with it to Keo, back to Carpenter and deflected out by the defense. Well, that didn't go as planned. No. <laughs> well defended. They were creative yesterday, certainly, in their corners. How's that for some analysis? <laughs> uh, terrific. They don't call them the best color analyst in the business for nothing, folks. No, it's interesting. Last night, there, I think it was the Calvin game. 
where uh, Amherst was trying multiple times to have short corners, and, and one paid off where they were able to score from the right flank on that give-and-go similar type play. Yeah, they, they, they've got some creative options over there. That can be a very effective option, but that first pass has to be on target and it has to be quick. Yeah, that, that one seemed, a, a, what do you call it, pace slow, maybe is a good way of describing it. Allow the defense to close in on Keo. Yeah, as soon as the corner kick is taken and the uh, individual taking the kick slides out, that pass has to be immediate. But otherwise, you're going to draw the defense to you. Right. Oh, I think that's over. Ewings tries to save it. The official calling a corner. The far assistant official calling a corner. Ewing can't believe it. Either that or she was hoping to get away with it. I don't know which. You were right. You saw it from all the way in our vantage point. Trust me, folks, that's a good... 75 yards from it, and uh, Iris saw it going over. Yeah, you're, ooh, there, there it right is. there. Right at the end. If she had held it on the line, it would have been good. Hand, yeah, if she was able to hold it there on the line, she's good. Remember, the ball has to go completely over. This time, a full serve into the box. Out swinger, no options there. Gets deflected out, and, and a little too passive. They waited uh, too long watching that ball. Yeah, Messiah almost broke out of that. They need, to, they can't sit back. Messiah not known as a team who will watch as well. They will be on the full gas attack if necessary. As the ball out of bounds will give the Herons a throw. Talking to some on the field, we were all spoiled yesterday in the Amherst men's game. No throwing the rest of this weekend is going to be the same until Amherst gets back on the field. Flip throws that can go 50 to 70 yards. Aaron's nice ball movement by McQuillan on the foot. Gets to the overlap. Looking for the cross. Here it comes. Deflected possibly, but headed out by Monko. Monko coming up big in the box, but it's still McQuillan on it. McQuillan with it. McQuillan still with it. Left foot, not a lot on it, but to Keo. That looked like a hand in the air, but I maybe it was just a deflection I missed. Tough with the shadows, of yeah, course. Yeah, we're looking towards the sun ourselves, folks, and so the box on the left is... Not the easiest to see. To me, McQuillan, when she gathers that ball initially, I thought she should have taken that initial shot. It's going to be a little tough there, I think, for Ewing out of the shadows to see a ball coming through traffic. Yeah, we talked about Ewing, by the way, not having the sun necessarily in her eyes, but it is that transition as in baseball. If you've got a pitcher in the sun and the batter in the box or in the shade, same in soccer. The, sh the shadow can fool you. And nope. it's halfway across the penalty box right now. But what I'm thinking of is takes that initial shot through traffic. Yeah. You get a rebound opportunity. Oh, nice deflection to the overlap to the far side. Cross back. Keo in intended for, but deflected out. I think that was on the foot of her. It was her, and she did a good job of actually stopping on a dime there because her momentum was actually carrying it to her left. A lot of work here from Carpenter, who's been doing a lot of throw-ins on the far side. You kind of see the slope there, by the way. We were talking about the slope right by the edge. You can see it there on the camera. There is a slope, but to oh, me, top shot. Oh, deflected. I think it's going to be a corner off the, after Adams took the attack. No, they're going to call goal kick. It wasn't as apparent of a slope as it was two years ago when we were here. So I think they've done some work on rolling the field a little bit. Rebecca Ritchie into the game for the Falcons, a 5'4 freshman midfielder from Broomall, Pennsylvania. And number 19, Mackenzie Swartley, the 5'4 midi out of Sutherland, Pennsylvania, the sophomore. They're going to replace Cole and Berger. Speaking of anniversaries, we talked about how this is exactly three months since the last time Messiah and William Smith played. Well, this is also the sixth anniversary of the last national championship for William Smith. Right. They won on December 7th, 2013. That team also allowed just six goals the entire season. Yeah, that 2013 team had a number of, of incredible opportunities. They had 21 shutouts that season, which is ties for the second in the division three record 16 of them were consecutive third longest in division three history with an 875 shutout percentage that team you yeah we mentioned earlier didn't allow only allowed six goals they may have come in two or three games i mean they were tough to score against back in that championship year of course back in the championship for the first time since that point they are a perfect 2-0 in championship games messiah in their 10th championship they have won five championships, so they're, they are in nine visits, five of nine. Grace Gillian gets into the game, the 5'7 freshman midfielder from South Portland, Maine. She enters the game. 
I missed who she was replacing, though you saw it there on camera. And you can argue that since UC San Diego won all those national titles early on in the history of D3 women's soccer, these are your two most storied programs in the country in the last 25 plus years since. Williams is trying to make a play in that, but you're right. Obviously, Williams, the two time champs coming into the season. But you're right, these two have been the most consistent. And I think a lot of that has to do with who's at the helm of the coaching staffs. Sure. Uh, that should be a push. That's a second push. I was going to let Suver get that one, not have a conversation, but Suver might be on a short leash now. She got her money's worth the second time. Third, yeah. third team academic All American. That was an academic foul. <laughs> She's figuring, you know what? I oh, see, I told you the uh, spray existed on the women's side. We did not see the spray in any of the semifinals yesterday, but we were seeing it here in the championship. We certainly saw it in the men's game. Uh, and we saw a fascinating moment in the men's <laughs> game. Late in the last game, I have yet never seen a player wipe the foam away from where the ball is supposed to be and then move up three feet. And use the ball. Shot over the crossbar. That one looked a little more dangerous than I think Kessler would have felt it was. If you if Kessler seemed to have it covered, it didn't feel it was going to be a problem. Uh, into the game for the Herons comes number 21, Maria Descano. She's the 5'5 junior out of Cape Elizabeth, Maine as well. Same place as Gillian. She just lost track of who the other two were coming in. I had them and I lost them. Uh, Mackenzie, uh, Kylie Firestone Daniel. and Mackenzie Swartley. No, Swartley was already in. Kylie Firestone, the 5'5 freshman forward out of Dover, Pennsylvania. Swartley was in. There was somebody else. We'll find her. I'm not sure who it was, but a reminder, in the first half, you can only be on the field once. There it is. It's Rebecca Ritchie, the 5'4 freshman, midi out of Broom, Broomall, Pennsylvania. She actually got her second start of the season yesterday, but does, comes off the bench today. Kylie Firestone, obviously the younger sister of Brooke, get to play together one year with Brooke being a senior, Kylie being a rookie. Again, you can only be on the field once this half. You can be on the field twice in the second half. So Messiah going deep in its bench. Probably the biggest reason is to get its starters a little bit of a break before the second half. Trying to track on this, nearly being able to run through it. As Maria Deskino, who just got into the game. As we get a lot of aggressive play now. Geez, body's now flying. Deskino just took a hit. Will go out of bounds in favor of Messiah. You can see the old lines of the old field there, and there you see head coach Alice Ann Wilbur. I think she would love to have gotten a couple calls there. More importantly, trying to get her team in reposition. If there's such thing as a legend in this sport. It is her, the only coach with more wins in the history of college soccer. Anton Doris, head coach of North Carolina. And we are down here in Tar Heel country. That foul called, and so Rath did her job, and now they'll put Suvera. You see her there now alongside her is Al Locks, the in his sixth season assistant coach, former Kiuka head coach, 64, 38, and 6 when he was head coach. He certainly brought a lot of experience to help with the Heron squad. And again, in the sixth season, we mentioned Chaz Allen along with Wilson Medeiros and Chip Carver on the sideline. Look at the fight, though, from this Messiah defense, you know. Oh, they don't give up. Opportunity, though. Keo on her right foot. Shot deflected out of bounds for the corner. It's a good thing that got deflected because deflected, Keo was teeing up a few there. that will be another corner kick here. William Smith unable to put much def uh, dangerously on target the first couple. You wonder what approach they take now. Two on the post here for Messiah in the near post. Ten minutes left to go here in the first half. This one, a long service. Back post. That's going to go out for another corner. And they're going to switch sides. The first time it'll be from our left. We mentioned something would have to give. There's no way these two teams would be held to two corners a game as they have defensively to their opponents. And that has been Taking the corner, number 22, Emily Sober. You hear the announcement. Sober is going to take this one. It'll be an in-swinger from the New York City native. There it is, into the box, trouble. Ewing read it perfectly. Ewing got it. 
Yep, Ewing snags that out of the air. Ewing had a great game yesterday, including two big saves in the penalty kick shootout, including the one that advanced them to the here in round four. She absolutely owned the shootout and against a Carnegie team that only missed one PK in a seven round right. against St. Thomas in the Elite Eight. Both those teams playing back-to-back -back PK shootouts in the quarters and semis. Masai would probably prefer not to go the distance today. Well, it's funny, they had gone 13 years without winning a shootout, yeah. and they went two in a row. Thank you, Mellon. yeah, you're right. Yeah. Yeah. Foul called, fans don't appreciate it, apparently. Talk about getting a monkey off your back. Yeah. Yeah, but I, I've been impressed by this Messiah defense. You know, one thing that head coach Scott Fry really described them as is unselfless, unselfish. They are a selfless bunch, and you know they do oh, all that, the little that things that necessary. Kick, by the way, went out of bounds at midfield, missed opportunity as Kessler just pulled it. Coach Fry feels that this group has done a great job of being disciplined collectively. Um, you know, traditionally, the eight goals they had given up coming to yesterday's game. Seems like very few, but that's uncharacteristic of the Messiah team. Uh, there's years where they only allow four. Chipped in. That's going to be an easy swallow up there for Kessler. Four or five goals an entire season yeah. entering the NCAAs and will allow five or fewer shots. There's, there's some games where they didn't allow any shots. There's a lot of experience on his coaching staff, too. You got Todd, Todd Ballsbaugh, a 94 grad of Messiah, who was actually played under Scott Fry when Fry was the JV coach for the men's team. He's in his 19th season. Eric White, a 98 grad of Messiah. In his eighth season, he works with the goalkeepers. I think he works with the goalkeepers for both teams. I may be incorrect on that. Holly Hoy, a Messiah 2016 grad. She only has, you know, one national title and two championship weekends worth of experience. And Marissa Canal. That's the assistance out there for the Falcons. Plenty of experience for this Falcons team and that should be a foul it will be on Suvera she has definitely gotten aggressive here Ira and I said she might be on a short leash I don't know how short because the official actually hasn't talked to her yet it will reset the balls to the near side here for a free kick well, she does not have a yellow card this season. No, in fact not a lot of red, yellows for either of these William teams. Smith is four in a year Masai just won the entire season Nice job in the corner there, battling it out. Finally to the top, but nothing going there. Big break opportunity, three on three. Three on three, going to feed it to the far side. It's McQuillan on a break. She's beating her defender, D'Amico. McQuillan into the box. D'Amico recovers. McQuillan fires just over the crossbar. Uh, what a feed from Amanda Adams, pushing that ball up the field, giving McQuillan that opportunity. Check it out again. This is Adams' second time that McQuillan has beaten D'Amico. A little far from her there. If she gets that running on, it's, it's another story. Now, with the defender coming in and cutting off the angle, I thought Messiah did a good job of recovering. Adams just having that wherewithal to allow McQuillan to run onto the ball. But two, three feet to the left, I think you have a much better yeah, shot opportunity. I don't think D'Amico cuts that off. If that ball, she can run straight on. She has to tail off to the outside to go get it. And that allowed D'Amico to recover and, and maybe not give McQuillan all the options she wanted. I'm just impressed right now with this William Smith offense. They're not known for their offense, but they're probably been in the Messiah half of the field. See at halftime the possession uh, numbers. 45%? I, I think they've been in this half. Probably, they've been on this half of the field 60% of the game, easily. Let's see what the stats say. I thought Messiah, with the, especially the beginning of the game, having so much control. Nice give and go. Threatening, no one's stepping up. Still into the box. Crossed in front. Cleared, but not out of danger yet. One McQuillan, too many touches. Far side. McQuillan still goes out of bounds. It'll be a throw-in for the Herons. I would have given up. After you got through the second defender, you, were, you had two Falcons there on the right side of the box. In the middle, you had two Herons open. Giving that ball up would have been the best option. I think she tried. I think, I think she did try. She just didn't get it. I thought she had a bad touch. Missed opportunity by Gray. Now, but that's way off to the side. You, it's trouble. It's hard for you guys to see it on your screen. That's how much the sun is affecting with the shadow. It's hard for us, too. As that sun creeps, it's it's literally getting lower, but it doesn't set to our left. It sets more kind of in our 
I was definitely Off in our the, line of sight. Yeah, you know. straight, more straight in front of us. You guys can't see Dave McHugh sitting to my left here in, in the booth, but he actually has to have his hand up to screen his eyes to be able to see <laughs> who's got the ball. It's not helping. Far side of the Carpenter now. Bright sunshine is great if you're on the beach, not so <laughs> great if you're calling a national title match. Or if you're the goalie on the far on the right side. Well, it's even worse if you're playing in the, in the national title match. That's definitely where winning the coin toss is important. You'll take the sun in the first half, give your opponent the sun in the second half. So we're late in the first half here. He's Ira Thor, I'm Dave McHugh. We got less than four minutes to play. A nil nil game, not unsurprisingly between these two teams. Don't know if that made any sense, but we're not surprised by it. Yesterday, cloudy day, today sunny. Temperature's about the same. Light breeze. Yesterday, the breeze started gusting about late in the first game, which was the 11 a.m. game that Messiah played in. Good opportunity, oh, but not eyes. enough pace on it. D'Amico with great eyes spun around to get to that, knowing where the ball had gone. And headed on by Berg, but kind of stuck now in this middle third, mainly on the Messiah defensive side. Well, said 60%. We'll see what that number is at the half. Sun's doing one other thing. That's beating into our windows. Doesn't feel like 52 degrees outside. It feels a lot warmer. It feels like we're on the beach. Fans won't complain. They're enjoying the fact that they get to keep warm. Remember last year when it was in Ooh, the 30s? Chilly. So they're stepping up. Nice defensive to shut that down. Stepping onto it is Manning. Suver crossed in to the corner. Trying to find an option there. Gray was struggling. Messiah trying to break out and that defense stifling things right at the center circle. We'll pass it back to the near side to Suver now. She'll use her left near side to Deskino. De And then deflected over. Trying to break out is Messiah here. Tracking back is Martinez. She's going to use Kessler, who boots it up, but not as far as you would maybe hope. Well, it gets over midfield with a flick. Well, they're trying to get that momentum built, but that Heron's defense is standing tall on a tight defense, too. They're coming up quick. I'll try to go outside there and stopped by Monko, who's had a great defensive game. She's also played pretty well up on the offensive end. That looked like a handle, and it is. As Des Deschino tried to tr play it down the chest, but then ended up handling it with her left arm. As we approach a minute left to go here in the first half, Foster will put a foot into this one. Headed by Gray, William Smith, as we hit that one minute mark. Far side with it, McQuillan with it. She's trying to beat D'Amico again. She's got the foot race. She's got past D'Amico, but that pass a little, or that dribble a little too far away. And coming off to close things down, the Elite 90 winner and Esther Sealand. Yeah, too big of a touch there. Obviously, you're trying to get yourself speed-wise in front of the defender, but Mosai does a good job of coming over and getting help defense. 32 seconds remaining here in the first half. And if you're William Smith, you got to be thrilled with how you attack the sunny side. If you can, or into the sun, you got to be pretty happy if you've got the sun at your back, maybe in the second half, if you can continue this. Because then Ewing is going to have a big challenge trying to keep track of that ball, as you see Ewing there. Yeah. Oh. Ten yeah. seconds left. 5 3 edge and shots in this first half for William Smith. Four corner kicks. Yeah, you don't have a goal to show for it. But you have to be pleased with what you're doing to try to keep Messiah on its heels. Especially to keep after Messiah started with so much momentum early on. As you see the coaching staff of the Herons chatting things over. Both teams are going to have to make some adjustments at halftime. We'll see what they are. When we come back, we'll have some stats and a little bit of highlights to get you ready for second half action. It's a national championship in Division Three women's soccer. William Smith versus Messiah. Nil-nil at the half. Championship, 45 more minutes in regulation left between the Falcons 
and the Herons, two best teams in the country, ranking-wise and historically in the last 20 years. You see Lyd Lydia Ewing there. She's going to have to deal with the sun now. Herons will have it at their backs as they in the, are in the green. It's Messiah and William Smith. I'm Dave McHugh alongside Ira Thor. William Smith riding a 17-game winning streak into this one. Messiah riding a pretty lengthy one themselves at 21 unbeaten games. Uh, unfortunately, somebody's going to have to lose this, even if it's in PKs, for a champion to be crowned. Messiah looking for their sixth championship and their first since 2016. William Smith looking for their first and since 2013 and their third. Pretty healthy crowd from what you saw yeah. on the uh, zoom out. And that says something because December, after the holidays, to try to get down to a neutral site, not always the easiest thing, but you know what? I think that NCAA has done a great job getting this championship to these neutral sites. Be a tough time of year to play this game in Grantham, or in Geneva, New York. Yeah, I, I would need hazard pay for the cold. <laughs> Let's be honest. Love Geneva. I love Grantham, but it's cold. I've actually never been to Geneva. A beautiful been, town. Yeah, I've been, Finger Lakes. been to Grantham a number of times, I, mostly to see my teams lose there. Yesterday I tried to rename the lake to Lake Geneva, even if it's in Wisconsin or Switzerland. I just wanted it in New York, too, but apparently, you know, it's Seneca Lake. Well, anybody watching yesterday during the uh, watch party at Scanling Center in yeah. uh, Geneva was probably, probably thinking, where's this things. lake that we don't know yeah, about? Exactly. I want to welcome them all if they're watching again. Of course, our friend Ken DeBold as well. He has told me they are watching. There Very is another good. watch party. Awesome. I am assuming that there is a watch party at Messiah as well, and if they are watching this game, and we know Falcon fans are watching around the country. Thanks for tuning in. I know both teams are enjoying the game, but I think you'd enjoy it more if your side had one in the bank right now. I think I have a couple friends I know watching. A neighbor who is from the Geneva area, boots on Hobart William Smith emphatically. As we got a chance here trying to streak down the line. And uh, former colleague of yours, sir, I have a gut feeling might be watching this game as well. Who would that be? Phil Nagel. Oh, interesting. I have a feeling. I can't give him a shout out. Well, you, you forced me. <laughs> Minute and a half into this, second half. We'll try and give you a sense of who has started this second half, though. Both teams like to play with their rosters at halftime. Messiah trying to break out here. Kind of a mini 3-2, three, 3-3 three, three break. Feed it to the left side. That's Mansfield streaking into the corner on the goal line. Up into the top of the box. I don't think Cole saw that. I, it, just by the way she reacted, I'm not sure she had a good look at that opportunity here. Mansfield trying to crash in. So Messiah starting the second half like they started the first half with a bit of pressure on the Herons. Mansfield is back out there. She came out midway through the first half, but not back out there, at least from our vantage point right now, is Brooke Firestone. Yeah, Firestone, I think, if I remember, came out late in the uh, midway through the second half yesterday, but I could be wrong. Uh, she came out a heck of a lot earlier in this game, and now you're wondering how much is that hamstring hindering her ability to even finish this final? Fair. So the ball out of bounds, Messiah keeping up the pressure. That's D'Amico, the defender. Well, she had a hard fall to start yesterday's semifinal game. She's played ever since, though. Pass into the box. Heron's defense defend that pretty well. Yeah, and an unlucky touch there by Mansfield trying to keep it inside the end line. You know, you got to feel bad. You got to feel for Firestone. You got to feel, of course, for Gelnovich, who, you know, your two first team All-Americans. You want to see this game played with the best possible players out on the pitch. Injuries happen, it is part of the game. But your heart can't, from a soccer point, you know, do anything but break for these players, not be able to finish their careers out on the field. Almost broke that one through. Trying to go was Adams, and that, and we mentioned this a lot yesterday, Foster shutting it down. Foster shut it down big time yesterday as well. You know, Foster has done an excellent job in that back spot. She had the unenviable task of replacing the Division Three National Player of the Year. And, you know, Foster to be in that role when she wasn't even on this team initially mm -hmm. coming out of high school. Um, she is a player that came you know, later in her career to Messiah. And Scott Fry is thankful he has her in the lineup. Messiah keeping up the pressure again, just like the first half started. 
Spin on the far side. Loniker cut back, feet in front. That's going to go off and be a goal kick. Heron's again trying to just kind of dealing with the pressure here like they did in the first half. You get a look there at Matty Cole, the Lancaster, Pennsylvania native. He's played and started every game, has 11 goals and 11 assists on the season. Three goals and three assists here in the NCAA tournament as Kessler gives it a boot. Don't forget, coming up 7 o'clock Eastern time will be the men's championship game, a battle of not only New England, but the NESCAC, as it'll be Amherst versus Tufts for another championship. Oh, a little nutmeg there. Oh, good idea. Just now on the same page, Carpenter and McQuillan. It stays in bounds, amazingly enough. Foster trying to tee it up. She gets it up ahead to Loniker. Loniker cuts it back into the middle. Great defense. It shut that up. Turn down by Martinez, forcing the ball backwards. It's interesting in the men's game, by the way, that we have you know a battle of NESCAC teams. We've had so many NESCAC UAA teams paired up in this championship game on the men's or women's side. So it's actually kind of unusual now to have a women's final that doesn't have a representative for one of those two conferences. You know, Liberty League, the Matt Commonwealth, both good leagues. I think the Commonwealth is the one that has actually come along in recent years. And I said a little bit of this yesterday. I think the emergence of Arcadia is the best thing that has ever happened to Messiah in the regular season because they are getting a challenge from another top 15 caliber team. Arcadia is the real deal. And yet, while Messiah hasn't lost a Commonwealth game, there have been ties. In fact, Arcadia, I think two to, or three of the last matchups have ended in ties. Going on to this weekend as well as the D3 football tournament, marching its way towards Stag Bowl. It'll take place in two weeks' time. Dells mean that Christmas isn't that far away. Probably should go shopping at some point. I should try and enjoy it. Stuck in the middle we are here between these two squads. I didn't really buy anything on Black Friday this year. It was a weird year. Muhlenberg got past Salisbury in football. Salisbury had been putting up 60-some-odd points a game in every tournament. They only put up eight against the Muhlenberg defense in 124-8. Uh, the big talk the in the football world is the fact that Mount Union yeah. bounced early this year. Yeah, North Central defeated them. And North Central continues to move on. They beat Del Val today, 31-14. So North Central to the, to the semifinals. And I believe, if I'm reading this correctly, Mary Harden Baylor is out possibly as well. It looks like Whitewater defeated him 26-7. So another behemoth out of the tournament. And that'd be an incredible win for Whitewater to win by that margin on the road. And it looks like St. John's may have gotten past Wheaton. We'll double check those scores, but the football tournament has been put on its head. Not like the women's tournament here in soccer, as we've got the two best teams in the country here, deservedly so. Now, there's two ways you can look at it. It's obviously, from a matchup standpoint, you like seeing the top two teams in the country play, but who doesn't like an underdog? Absolutely. Carnegie Mellon nearly did that yesterday, knocking off this Falcons team barely. First off, they got a 1-0 lead and held that to late in the second half before Messiah finally got a gorgeous goal. It was her, if I remember, who put it into the corner. And in an unreachable spot. From about 25 spot. yards, yeah. It's just a perfect shot. And then... In overtime, though, second overtime, Tartans nearly scored on a rebound that a team defense had to save. It was D'Amico with the save at the line. And to confirm, by the way, Muhlenberg did beat Salisbury. North Central did beat Del Val. Whitewater did beat Mary Hart and Baylor, the number two team in the country. And St. John's did beat Wheaton. So... <laughs> Muhlenberg, St. John's, Del Valle, and Whitewater. Only one purple team left. If you're a football fan, you understand the significance of that. Back here, these two teams still knotted zeros here. Big opportunity here. The Falcons, they haven't had one since probably 10 minutes into the game. Yeah, just their second of the game here. In Swinger. Yep, it's going to come from Mansfield. To the point, uh, hits the side netting. So no, ends up being not a threat as we get a sub first time. Harris, Grace Gillian into the game. The South Portland native, as we pointed out, from Maine. 
Shoot him who plays. This is interesting. Yeah, yeah, he plays the first team All American defender. Yeah, to take a defender out and put a midfielder in. Sounds like William Smith wants to get a little more aggressive here. Now, Martin is obviously first team All American, the Liberty League Defensive Player of the Year. Granted, you, you can, oh, that's out of bounds. It'll be Heron's ball. Transfer Granted, from can, Arkansas to Little Rock. Right. Uh, you can be on the field twice. So this isn't like a full fledged change, but it is a sign that the Herons maybe feel they need to control the ball in the midfield a little bit more and move it up field if at all possible. Yeah, I mean, for me, I mean, it's not a, a something to do with Ooh, fatigue, obviously, because you're just bouncing back off of, of halftime. So maybe no. it's one of two things. What you're talking about, about pushing everybody up the field, which I think is certainly a game plan that could be used at this point, or trying to keep her to have fresh legs. For so later. at the end yeah. of the game against yeah, Messiah. Bring a defender in for that? Well. Depends what their role is. Are they, are they in a holding oh, break spot? Breakout in the middle, though. Opportunity. Goal! Falcons take advantage of a defensive change by William Smith, and they strike first. Falcons lead 1 0 in the championship game. Matty Cole's 12th goal of the year. A perfect through ball up the middle to the spot where Mayon Martinez would have been had she not just been pulled from the game. Cole picks up her 12th goal of the game, her 12th goal of the season. Loniker picks up her 17th assist, which now ties her for second all uh, for second in the in uh, in a season with Aaron Hatch. That record set in 2011. Her career high in goals, assists, and points continues to go. That is now second, as we mentioned, all time for assists in Messiah history. Well, we said we had to see more from Loniker if Messiah was going to win this thing. First so. time we've said her name in a while, and that was a perfect ball up the middle. And Watch out, William Smith quickly countering. It's coming into the box. Shots over the crossbar. Ewing did not get all of that. Now, Ripper from Berg goes through Ewing's hands, but luckily enough pace upward to get over the crossbar. Almost an immediate response, Ira, from the Herons. Well, they do counter well here. Ewing, that one was too hot to handle. I thought for a second that one had trickled in. So did I. Fifth corner kick coming up. The feed had come from Adams. Adams, I believe, taking the corner here. No, that is Carpenter, out swinger. At the six, a flick on. Unfortunately, not in a place for Gillian to do anything with. It's on her foot now. She'll step back, try and reset. Good defensive close out there by the midfield of Messiah. Still alive, though. Was her had done a nice stop job initially to stop that. And now the boot from Swartley. Well, we cannot read the mind of Alessandra Wilbur, but as almost immediately after Martinez taken out of the game, you saw what happened. And you wonder if she... You know, regrets that decision right there. When you have a first team All American defender, that is a rare chess piece. Never a fan of pulling that off the field unless there's an injury involved. Defensive player of the year in the conference as well. First teamer. Could very well be the defensive player of the year in the country if they gave one out. 33 and a half minutes left. This game far from over though. But pretty darn dangerous to be up one nothing in this battle that is for sure but it, it was the immediate response with Martinez out of the game first time Messiah has scored against William Smith this season they lost two nothing in their previous matchup three months ago interesting play there by Moore I thought she was going to boot it up now she will but she had retreated about 20 yards before doing so cross in front and finally stepped up and clearing it as you see the shadow now well outside the 18 on our left side and you're now starting to see shadows from the far side of the field encroaching on the field as the sun gets lower in the sky to our left, kind of setting over by the corner. Through ball, streaking through is Mansfield. Coming out, it's Kessler, who I think was right on the line there. They're going to call a goal kick. Interesting. I thought she cleared lost, it out into a I corner. lost Kessler on the way in. See what happens here as Kessler comes out and plays this with her feet. Hard to see. Good call. Uh, yep, yep, good call. Caught the attacking player on the way out of bounds as it clipped Mansfield. And By the way, coming out of the game comes Grace Gilling, who just came in. 
Well, who's back in the game? Martinez. Thank you. I was trying to find who had just re-entered the game. And I do see Martinez back out there. That one headed back off the goal kill kick. Mansfield out. So is Kessler. And Kessler swallows it up a second time in a row, this time with her hands. Great job by Kessler recognizing that ball was going to get past the back line, coming out and attacking it immediately. And she's put it down now, so we're going to get a kick off the turf. Man, and then uh, Martinez tried to get it up over the midfield line. Falcons are starting to swarm here. Loniker with it, far side. She'll feed Mansfield into the corner. Being closely guarded, kicks it back, cross coming on the one touch. Loniker not there. Headed out, but still not out of trouble. Messiah smelling another opportunity, and Kessler has to come up with a big save. Yeah, I think that one caught Kessler a little bit by surprise. At first, I thought she was going to have an opportunity to grab it. But the, the last side. minute, had to punch it oh, away. No. Just shade the whole way. Yeah, she's right That's there. Curling on her. Yeah. Let's take another look right here. Ball coming yeah. in, line drive last second with the curl. You see it. Yeah, you start seeing it going for the corner. You'll wonder, however, if she could have blocked that in front of her and picked it up, preventing the corner opportunity. Berger and Cole are hanging out in the corner here. I think it's a deke here for Berger to launch it. It is. Back post. Punched out. It looked like her headed out. Coming back in. Foster. And Kessler goes and swallows it up. But Ke Foster, smart play there. Coming out of the sun. Chips it back towards the far corner. Trying to catch it. It might have been D'Amico, actually. You thought it was Foster. So all of a sudden, the Herons now down one nothing. And it was a good play there by Foster because she did have Sipe on the right side of the box there with an opportunity. Right now, the Falcons are controlling the ball in the, in the attacking side. And the defense for the Herons is, is lunging a little bit, not able to shut things down. It's Sipe with it far side. She hands it off. I think that's Mansfield. Now to her. That's cut off by Martinez. Martinez, the right foot trying to launch. Berg, but cut off by D'Amico. Again, one nothing lead for Messiah, though. It was nearly answered immediately off the kick off by the Herons, who came storming down the field, and Berg put a ripper in with her right foot that seemed to fool Ewing or had Ewing with some trouble handling it, nearly got under the crossbar. Into the game for the Falcons comes Kylie Firestone. Gonna take Monko out. They're replacing Monko, probably giving Monko a break just for a quick breather here. 30, 29 minutes left. She's most likely gonna come back in. So that's you know forward coming in for a midfielder. Though so they could obviously take Firestone and Sager into the midfield easily, and she kind of lining up in that position. Monko's been that right back most of the year. She's a player who's dealt with ACL injuries, and both teams have players that have had issues with their knees. Stuck in the middle here if you're a Herons fan. You need this to kind of start moving downfield. Keo, we haven't talked much about in the second half. Helps spring them on the attack here. A missed pass by Berg, though, but they'll take the break here. Kicking out of bounds was Cole. So the Herons have a throw in here. And Carpenter will do the honors in front of the Messiah bench. Ball headed out of bounds and will do it again further downfield. Not sure where Carpenter was throwing that one. No one was home. D'Amico with the easy play. Loniker tries to bring it down. Now to the near side with it. It's Berger, and Berger's attempt is knocked out of bounds, and so they'll throw it in. He's Ira Thorum, Dave McHugh. You're watching the Division Three Women's Soccer Championship game here on NCAA.com. Messiah now with a 1-0 lead, picking up the score a few minutes ago. They're the top unanimous ranked number one team in the country in the polls coming into the NCAA tournament while William Smith, the number two team, despite the fact the Herons defeated Messiah 2-0 exactly three months ago today. But it's a different ball game here right now as Messiah has got the 1-0 lead. Martinez, who had been pulled out of the game for a break, not that you would pull her again, but should point out she's not going to be able to be subbed out if she wants to return to this game. Good pressure there by Shelby Berger. Made this That's a much a more difficult play for the defense. Unfortunate deflection there for Carpenter goes into the corner, and that will be another corner kick. 
as kicking it out of bounds is Rath. And so the Herons, who have controlled a lot of the second of the second quarter of this game, have now found themselves on the defensive end. Lodeker fires, saved by Kessler. A little too easy a defense from Rath there. She let Lodeker spin on that shot and have an open look, and Kessler comes up big. And look at the reaction, the joy of happiness here by Kessler after making this save. Martinez actually on defense. Look at that. She makes the turn oh, here. A little bit of hold. Got away with that one. Cross coming in on the corner. Headed out. We'll get another look at it later, I assure you. There's a huge fist pump from Kessler at the end of that play. That, that's about that's as a point blank. Another one Kessler's on. That's about as point blank of a shot that we've seen in this entire championship, eight, male or yeah, female. It's what, eight yards out? A little bit of hold there, I'll admit. Yeah, that's an eight-yard shot, and Kessler all over it. What a reaction time there, and she got up, and immediately yes. you see the reaction. I'd have the same darn reaction I make a save like that. Absolutely. Okay, here now the Heron's coming. Opportunity on the foot right now of Adams. Oh, and Adams depossessed from behind by Cole. Messiah trying to counter now. Going the other direction. They're going to play back to Kessler, feeling the pressure from Lonaker and kicks it out of bounds to the near side. It's going to be a throw in for Messiah. You see the fans <laughs> shading their eyes too. It's Messiah fans on the attack as you see Kessler there. Kessler, of course, coming in with a 0.27 goal against average, save percentage of 889. 15 shutouts. Ewing coming in with his 036 goal against average. Megan Manning. 79 save percentage. Megan Manning is coming into the game here for William Smith. Amanda Adams. Giving Amanda Adams a break. Adams so key, though, in that transition game for them. But you need her fresh, too, if you're going to mount a comeback. Going around, it's Kylie Firestone, the younger of the two sisters, to the far side. It's one thing about mounting a comeback. If you fall behind 2-0, there's no coming back from that in this kind of game. Another substitution here. Messiah will bring in Claire Breyer them, and Rebecca Ritchie. And William Smith will bring into the game Sarah Gray, the little kid Colorado native, making her 23rd. Well, she played the first half, 23 appearances this season. Haven't talked a lot about Keo for this Heron squad. She had the second half goal against Hopkins in their win in the quarterfinals. And scored the game winner, the first one. Opportunity again. Scored the first goal yesterday, which ended up being the game winner against Pomona Pitzer. She's got five game winners this season. Six goals, five of them being game winners. That's how key she is. They have not had a lot of success getting her involved in the offense. Don't believe she's out there, right? No, there she is, far side, as it goes back to Kessler. Keo yesterday, before that goal she scored, had plenty of opportunities as Pomona Pitzer struggled to guard her. A little too far for Manning to run onto. She's into the game. Battle for the ball coming over is Carpenter, but it's going to go out of bounds, trying to keep it away. From Sipe. Again, Messiah trying to wrestle in a sixth national championship in the first since 2016 in 10 trips to the championship game in their history. Feed to the far side. Firestone streaking in. That's a good battle over there. Top of the box. Shot from outside the box deflected. It looked like on the way in, maybe, but they're going to say goal kick as Kessler covered the covered the post. Eileen Rath for William Smith, number 10, had to make a long run, try to almost run parallel with the flag here to try to break up that shot attempt. Well, that was quick. Nice Gillian already back in. She gives Elizabeth Moore a break. There's another bring in a midfielder for a defender move. You know, Rath basically had to sprint maybe 30 yards there from the middle of the field onto the right side of the box. Otherwise, that's a good shot opportunity for Messiah. Herons are struggling to maintain possession on the right-hand side of this field. And Messiah is taking advantage of a mistouch there from Sipe. 
will give the Herons the throw in. Again, our officials, Nicole Green, Taylor Polonsky, and Anya Voigt. Voigt, the assistant refs, and Carlos Fernandez is our fourth. Science defense has not been threatened in this second half outside of the counter off the goal. Moniker is going to get called for a handball here. And it's interesting, too, because we were talking about in the first half just how much of the possession that William Smith had was in the second half of the field in Messiah's defensive half. It's been a different story here in the next 45 minutes of this game. William Smith's got to figure this out fast. Got 20, 20 minutes to try to get back in this game. 21 and a half to be exact. Streaking is Silver. We haven't talked much about today. I mean, this half. We talked plenty about in the first half. Corner kick opportunity for the Herons as Silver forces the issue there. It goes off That's the so foot of Kylie kick. Firestone. You've got Keo and Gray now parked inside the six. You've got Gillian, Rath, Martinez and others in the middle of the box and Manning lurking on top. It'll be a corner from Carpenter into the box, head on, but it flex out. Saya dodges that one again as they've given up plenty of corners. This one chipped back towards the box. And Herons are watching a lot of balls land, not chasing down 50-50s. Messiah is winning a lot of those right now. Nice battle there, though, by Martinez, who stepped up from the defensive end as they crunch the defensive field because the all three defenders up high. Loniker with a shoulder there. They'll pass it back to Kessler, who's 10 yards out of the box. That's how much the Herons are pushing up here. You gotta be careful not to get caught here. Move off of Martinez's foot, but Carpenter back. Now we'll have to play it herself and will kick it out of bounds, not. But William Smith intends here with this with this more aggressive defensive look. I thought Carpenter had a lot of time there to play the ball back to Kessler and try to push the ball up the field. Into the game comes Abby Monko returning and she will replace Mansfield to give her a break. Yeah, but because of that decision now, they're pinned deep in their defensive third. Again, William Smith immediately getting aggressive defensively. of battling for the ball here goes out of bounds that should be Heron's throw and it is quickly upfield trying to find somebody nice pass trying to set look at the defense the Falcons are playing as Swartley gets back and they're gonna call a foul on Manning for trying to hold Swartley but Swartley immediately responded the Falcons are are quicker at responding and getting everybody back defensively and that's styming the Heron's attack yeah, and this is a Heron team that's gritty, a very pacey, organized team. They're going to need to figure this out quickly, however, because Messiah's defense, they have collectively worked very well together in the second half. Trying to release the offense here. Quick chip by Richie to the top. Kessler all the way out of her box. Now grabs it just inside the 18. Great reaction for her to number one, realize the ball had been deflected and they get back in the right spot and catch it inside the 18. So she comes out here to get big, uses her feet, it goes back in the box and she's able to corral it with her hands. And if it not had been for the English, she would have caught it outside the 18 or or would ball would have play with her head or something. Something because Masai could have just had a toe poke. We got a foul at the top of the box or near the midfield, so we will get a free kick here. Raft's not going to kind of boot it she's going to feed it to Martinez Martinez nearly got taken away stays on top of it watch out Messiah's got numbers here a oh, good job by Carpenter to at least slow things down trying to turn on it here is Sipe Sipe on the near sideline in front of us and the Herons get it back they've got a chance McQuellen we've not talked much about in the second half either she was instrumental in the first half Ooh, getting aggressive. Yeah, there's a foul. <laughs> Ryer that time doing her best Loniker impersonation. As you take a look there at Kayla Her, I'm correction, that is Megan Manning. Just one goal on the season, the Issaquah Mass or Washington native. 
Coming up on 17 minutes remaining in the Division Three Soccer Championships here in women's soccer. Talked and about Sai with a lead, one nothing. We talked about her being from Washington. This header in front. That's not on cage for Mansfield. Now this Heron squad's pretty diversified, by the way. They're they got 32 players from four countries and nine states. Heron's coming in. Rath and Berg return. I'm looking at the long loss. Cole and Mansfield return. And into the game for the Herons comes Kaylee Bennett for the uh, first time. 5'6 junior defender out of Amityville. New York, and I believe I saw Elizabeth Moore return to the game. Yep, Moore is right there on the ball. She heads it. And they're going to call a foul on the aforementioned Elizabeth Moore. So they bring Kylie Firestone out, we should mention, for the Falcons. I don't, has her sister been out there? She's not played in the second half. In fact, she's not played right in now. the last 30 minutes. And they don't need her right now. They got a one nothing lead without her. I said 30 minutes, last 45 minutes. Yeah. Came out midway uh, through that first half. Team leader in goals scored. Missed a few games this season, including a couple in the conference. That's a through ball. Running onto it is Loniker, but Kessler all the way out of her cage. But it's up onto the foot of Richie on the steal to Loniker. Loniker trying to just set things up. Love the turn, but no chance there is the help defense from Moore. But a nice kick over the top, and it will be Rath that snuffs it out, despite the fact that Richie looked like she was threatening there. Yeah. 15 and a half minutes to go in the title game. Rath did a nice job recognizing on the back line. She had two attacking players pressing her, not allowing a corner. Going to get a free kick from a corner-like position as Bennett is called for the push. So a chance here. Looks like they're putting Swartley on the ball. They're going to mark off the 10 just to be safe. You can take the dash line on the sideline and take about a pace off of that, and that's roughly where they mark off the 10. So they go, they're they looking far post here. Tough to see from our vantage point. I'm trusting both the monitor and trying to get a peek. Here it comes. About 12 yards deep, deflected out of the box by the Herons. They have yet to be able to counter that way. Great pass into the corner now. Running onto it, Swartley. Left foot on the line, and Kessler indicating it was out. That's a gutsy play in case it wasn't. And we'll get a substitution as Adam, Amanda Adams will return. She will replace Megan, Megan Manning. Adams so integral, Ira, in the transition game. With less, well, just about 14 minutes left. They need Adams, they need Keo, need others to start, McQuillan especially, to start transitioning downfield. As much as William Smith was dominating the second quarter of this game, they have yet to really control it in the offensive end in this half. Well, William Smith has only had a couple of even opportunities yeah. here in the second half. The majority of this second half has been played in that. Uh, Messiah attacking half of the field. Well, and look, they're forced to go all the way back to the defense as Moore passes it back. This Messiah team loves to push forward. They, they're willing oh. to take chances and taking those chances. Another missed pass. And allows them to have that upper hand on these teams and that love to play defense. Berg depossesses. She tries to go for the pass. William Smith just a half a step slower. Look, right side, there's an opportunity here. Oh, if they can Lonaker find Loniker. was going there, but good closeout defense to keep Rath from making that pass. William Smith fighting for it in the middle, but there's more Falcons than there are Herons right now. That one just floats right back into a Falcon foot. Big collision. Defense getting worn out. Keo trying to recover back. She's going to keep chasing this one down. Keo's never this far down the field. Messiah looks like the more fit team right now. Yes. Almost 80 minutes played. Falcons looking for more. Want to make sure they get a little... Cushion under their one nothing lead. They had a great opportunity oh, wide open back. was Richie. Didn't see her. Collision at the top of the box. Kessler will pick it up. Richie yes. was wide open on the left side. Nobody was marking her. Golden opportunity missed by the Falcons. The sun's starting to affect the cameras now as it dips lower in the sky. Shadows getting longer. The chances of the Herons winning this getting longer. 
big collision, dangerous play. I think they're going to call. No, I was going to say maybe they're calling dangerous play on Messiah. They're going to call a push instead as Richie took a hit. They'll restart here, play it back to Sealand. Sealand to the near side. Messiah not comfortable with sitting back on a one nothing lead. They are in full attack mode. Nice step up by Foster again. Deja vu to yesterday. Taking it away from Adams. Amanda Adams, a second team All-American. They need her to help create right now. This team, the Herons, are going to have any chance to tie this game. Messiah looking to avenge their only loss of the season and win a national title. William Smith trying to double down in a three-game winning streak against this Messiah team and come back, but right now it's all Messiah. And it's a big credit here to both Foster and Seelan. Look at the height advantage coming. The two center backs for the Falcons right now are closing off the middle of the field. McQuillan happens to save that after Adams tried. And that's what happens. William Smith starting to get very frustrated. Yep. Can't get down the middle of the field, cannot force anything. So now they are trying to push the ball wide and they're making the passes that are inadvertently off target. Into the game, Amanda, well, Julia Keogh returned. No, oh, that's not possible. Oh, I had the wrong side. Emily D'Amico along with Shelby Berger into the game and Brianna Seip returned. The Herons, Katrin Berg returns, and I believe I saw Elizabeth Moore back into the game. Carpenter with it near side. She's trying to send to her teammate down the wing. That is Berg into the corner, out of bounds, and it's Messiah throwing. Time running out. 10, 15 or so left to go here. Messiah with a goal in this second half, and have kept their foot on the accelerator. Despite no goals, they have kept the Herons from getting comfortable. William Smith had one opportunity right after the goal scored on the on the uh, ensuing kickoff. They went streaking downfield and nearly got the equalizer. It didn't slip through Ewing's hands, but it nearly did. Not paying attention was Berg on the throw in by Carpenter. Otherwise, Berg would have had an opportunity. Defense is literally all the way up into the offensive third. So having to recover here is Gillian. And that's out of bounds. It'll be Heron's throw. And no. Yes, they will say it was out of bounds. Ira, they are on the other side. Oh, they're on the offensive side of the circle is the defense. That's how much pressure they're trying to apply to Messiah. But Messiah still having more success. Herons are at a point here where all the defense in the world doesn't make a difference. You need a goal or the right. season's over. Goes out of bounds, it'll be a throw in. Doing the honors is McQuillan. Technically, the season's over no matter what happens. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> Leave it all in the field. Both teams are at this point. You give up another There's goal. No tomorrow. What's the difference at this point? Less than nine minutes to play in the national title game. That one finally a threat. First time that you, Ewing's had to do anything in this second half other than that one save off the breakout. And the first time she's had to look into the sun, yes. which is slowly dipping behind the UNC Greensboro basketball facility to the left of this field. Yeah, over in the corner in the left far flag. Falcons trying to counter now. Far side with it is Mansfield. She's being one on one guarded by Gillian. Keo, oh, if Keo can get there, she can get going past Foster possibly. That's going to be a Falcons throw in. They're not looking to stall, they're not looking to. to hold the ball they're literally trying to score another one as Keo comes all the way back for that one watch out now the herons might have a chance though they don't have numbers as falcons immediately recover great defensive work by sealand to slow things down and force adams all the way across the field and sealand again the 800 meter national champion not going to get tired out there no, she and can go anywhere that you go in that race she was second coming off the corner and she ended up winning it by four seconds in the closing hundred She's got that kind of speed blocked by Wrath, but Messiah still in control. Seven and a half minutes left in the title game. Going around the corner, it's Mansfield being harassed by Swa Solvair, who we've he's talked a lot about in the first half, but not in the second. Trying to go around, they're going to play it back to Ewing, running on is Adams. 
headed back. Adams in an offside position, but is reset. Not a threat, though, as D'Amico clears it. 7.08 remaining. Up ahead, Seif. That ball out. Heron's throw. Seven minutes left. The pressure on. Substitution for William Smith. They're going to bring in Charlotte Carew. Carew, I apologize. 5'7", junior of a New Rochelle, New York. Just her 19th game. She played yesterday as well, but coming in in a high pressure situation. She's a midi as they try and flood the zone. Can't hold it as Adams. McQuillan up. Now Adams on her foot. Messiah has everybody back. And there to the ball before William Smith and even connects the pass. Loniker takes it away from Carew. Loniker again being harassed but finds an opening in Berger. Berger can't control it and the Herons will have it. 6-17 remaining. Time ticking away. Played by Manning. Up ahead. Her. This time they do Pick play it back. it back. Oh, Kessler miss kicks it again. Ah, she wants that one back. She's had a three or four of those today. Six left to go in this national title. Messiah fans hoping for a sixth national title. You can tell which keeper is more comfortable with the ball at their feet. But not Berardo for Pomona Pitzer yesterday was probably the most comfortable oh. of any keeper we've seen this year. Berardo, ball just stuck to the foot. Incredible control. And it gives you basically a fifth defender. That's why you tell a lot of players not to start learning goalie too early or at least also learn the field skills. Because the goalie needs them for starters, but you also want to be adaptable. Messiah trying to break out. They're trying to send Mansfield into the corner. It's going to go out of bounds for a goal kick. Five. 15 remaining. At least it's just one goal here for William Smith, but they are running out of time. Substitution just in time for the Falcons as Mallory Johnson will check in for the, for the first time. The 5-5 sophomore forward from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania will replace Brianna Sight. That's, I believe, the last time Sight can be on the field. So the freshman will come off. Uh, if that had come under five minutes, the clock would have stopped as the leading team subbing stops the clock. They got it just in the nick of time. Messiah, yeah. yes, you might want to push forward for a decisive goal to end this, but at this point, you just got to defend. Do not allow for any kind They're of an staying aggressive, though. balance break. They are staying aggressive. How many teams do we know would pack it in right now? Coming around, it's Berger. Can't hold on. McQuillan back trying to punch it upfield. Out of bounds, Herons. 424 remaining. Up the line and out of bounds. It'll be Messiah throwing and a waste of clock here. This now, has been the Messiah. say it never went in, so it's going to be a rethrow. But this has been the Messiah team that we expected to show up in the Final Four that was not on the field yesterday against Carnegie Mellon. This second half team is a Messiah team that's a dynasty. We're going to stoppage clock here. I think confusion on the throw, and it will be a Messiah throw. And of course, the Herons were afraid that Messiah was wasting the clock. Ooh, extra words there as the fourth official having a conversation, I think, with Wilson Medeiros of the William Smith coaching staff, and that was heated. Four minutes remaining in the 2019 National Championship in Division III women's soccer. Messiah goes into the corner. It should be a throw-in. It will be. Herons running out of time with the Messiah 1-0 lead, and Messiah continues to be aggressive. Johnson, now the cross from Berger to the top of the box. It's kicked back by Gillian. And William Smith, who had so much success in the first half, has been stymied in the second half by this Falcons unit. 3.20 remaining. Now it's time to go in the corner and just stall. Ball out of bounds off the foot of Johnson. So they'll throw it in to the Herons, but they're a long distance away from even being a threat to Ewing. I think unless they attack from the far side, the sun's not even a factor for Ewing at this point. And that out of bounds will be another Messiah throw in as we tick under three minutes. There's no more defense for William Smith. You got to push everybody up in these final three minutes. Try to get an equalizer. If anything, keep Martinez back. Somebody, just in case there's a break, and push the other nine up. 
2.35 remaining. Messiah into stall mode now for the first time in this half. Kicked out of bounds will be Herons thrown. McQuillan. Oh, my goodness. They're going to call that off of the Herons? That's a bad call. Yeah, that should have been. We saw that live here on the yeah. screen. Obviously, we had a different vantage point. That should be the Herons throw. That, McQuillan kicked it off of the Messiah player. <laughs> a little shove for good measure. Up to the middle. Now the Herons have a legit chance to break out. As two minutes left, and they boot it up into the defense, right into the teeth of the defense. Fighting for it is Adams to McQuillan on the near side. Nearly deep possessed by Berger. She'll break out. Now deep possessed by D'Amico with a big play. Out of bounds. A minute 50 left in this one. How soon does Kessler come all the way out of her cage? She's out of her box. Flick it up. Cannot control it was Berg, but yes. it's in the air. Adams tries to play for it. It's going to be a foul on Adams, and that might do it with 95 seconds left. That might be the last threat. The fans ready to cheer on. Messiah, who's back in this game for the first time since 2016. They've made 10 trips in their previous nine. They have won the title five times. They're trying to win a sixth. They've got 75 seconds left. This would be the first time William Smith will have not won a national title when being in the national championship game. They've won the two previous trips. McAdam with some great dribbling, but right back into the teeth of the defense, and it's Foster as we're under a minute off the play. The pressure is on. Headed straight up. Heron's trying to run on. They've got a chance. Adams, toe poking in the corner. McQuillan, 48 seconds left. McQuillan with a chance to cross. She does. It's a low screamer. Kicked out of the box. 42 seconds out of bounds. It'll be throw in for William Smith. Carpenter's going to do the honors. Throws it to the box. Coming to meet it. It was Berg. Ball's up in the air. Headed by D'Amico. Carpenter heads it down to Adams. 26 seconds left. Cross to the top of the box. Flicked on. Ewing's going to swallow it. And that's going to probably do it. 20 seconds left. The official telling Ewing not to waste clock. Ewing will put a foot into it. To midfield with 13 seconds left. Get ready, Messiah. It's another title for the Falcons. Five seconds left in the season. And for the sixth time in 10 trips to the championships, Messiah is your national champions in women's soccer. You got a ring for the other hand. Heck of a game from Messiah, who nearly got knocked off in the semifinals and the quarterfinals. Had to come from behind in a, many games, but it had to come from behind at the last minute in yesterday's contest. Avoided a near upset in overtime, get to this, and controlled about three quarters of this game. Sometimes it's the teams that deal with the most adversity along the journey that come out with the ultimate prize. Messiah had to find ways to kind of change, adapt its game against opponents that were trying to take it out along the way. Took out the two-time defending champions. Took out a upstart young Carney Mellon team that wanted to be in this spot and very well maybe in the future, but Messiah has been the kings of women's soccer since Scott Fry took over a program that had not accomplished anything on the national stage and they are continuing to be the program that everybody wants to emulate. This freshman unit is the last ones who got to a title game, won it in 26, or got there in 2016, but they uh, did not win it. This is the first championship since 2012 for this Messiah team. And you see the emotions from the Falcons you saw the emotions from their goalkeeper, Lydia Ewing, who didn't get really challenged in the second half except for that one shot off the, off the breakout from the kickoff from the goal, nearly got through her hands, went up and over the crossbar, and after that, Messiah just absolutely put their foot on the game and kept William Smith from doing anything they wanted. And you gotta ask, was bringing out Martinez for even a short break worth, worth the sacrifice? Not at all. 
I think that is the turning point of the game. Clearly it led to the only goal that's going to matter in this one. This Messiah group, the hallmark of this group all year has been the fact that, you know, obviously offensively they're able to, you know, get goals and get goals from a lot of people. But at this time of year, it's about the teams that play defense, and they've proven today that while they may be an offensive team in terms of their overall identity, man, every player on this team was able to press defensively, and they kind of played with a, a, a energy, just never quit energy about them. They did that against Williams being down 2 nothing. They did that here against William Smith in a 0-0 game where they were probably outplayed in that first half. Came out with a different level of energy in the final 45 minutes. And they're taking yet another trophy back to Granham, PA. And hope they have some spare trophy cases. Quickly for both fans, sets of fans, we will be showing the trophy presentations for both teams. So Ira and I will be wrapping up our coverage here momentarily. The stream will continue. You'll get to see the trophies. But congratulations to Messiah. They finished the season 22 one and three, one zero oh and one, and neutral site games for William Smith. They finish the season 21 2 and one. These two teams split the regular season series between them. William Smith finishes two and one in neutral site games. Ira, heck of a championship. We got one more ahead of us in the men's game, but Messiah certainly deserved this one. Yeah, I think Messiah was the team that in the second half was able to kind of change its game. The teams that are able to adapt to pressure are the teams that sometimes find ways to win games where, quite frankly, it is a toss-up. This was a toss-up. Heck, you look at the possession, the final possession numbers for the game, it was basically a dead heat. Messiah had the ball 51% of the game, 49% for William Smith, and... Actually, total shots. Messiah came back at the end, 10 to 8, but six corner kicks for William Smith. Could not find a way to put one in. They had so many opportunities. Ewing had a great game, but this Messiah defense is back for. You got to give a lot of credit to Seelan, to Foster, to the outside backs, but also to midfielders who were playing box to box throughout and weren't allowing William Smith to have any easy opportunities. Messiah knocks off the defending national champs or advances past him when Williams in the quarterfinals. They were the last team to get back-to-back -back championships was Messiah in 2011-2012. This is their first title since. Congratulations to the Falcons on the Division III Women's Soccer Championship. Congratulations to the Herons on a terrific season. For Ira Thor, I'm Dave McHugh and our entire crew who put these broadcasts on this weekend. We thank you for tuning in. We'll let you enjoy the championship ceremony here and remind you that the men's championship will start at 7 o'clock here on NCA.com. It's a battle of NESCAT teams, Amherst and Tufts for the Walnut and Bronze. Again, for the entire production crew, thank you for tuning in. Messiah, your 2019 Division III Women's Soccer Champions. Congratulations to the Falcons on NCA.com. From the Slayer, number nine, Ilya Monica. From the Slayer, number 21, Esther Seymour. And now introducing our most valuable players. First, our most valuable defensive player from the Messiah, number 23, Bar Foster. And finally, our offensive MVP from Messiah, number 10, Mary Cole. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful round of applause for our all tournament team. <laughs> and now it's time to present our runner up trophies for our runner-up team of the 2019 NCAA Division III Women's Soccer Championship, finishing with a record of 22-2. Ladies and gentlemen, the Wilson Smith Herons. <laughs> Presenting the award, the members of the NCAA Championship Committee. First, the players. Number one, Justine Pearson. Number two, Phoebe Wade. Number four, Julia Vermetta. 
Number six, Grace Gillian. Number seven, Amanda Adams. Number eight, Sheila McClellan. Number ten, Irene Rand. Number eleven, Megan Manning. Number twelve, Julia Berg. Number thirteen, Katrine Berg. Number fourteen, Kelly Bennett. Number fifteen, Katie Mandorado. Number seventeen, Julia Keo. Number eighteen, Genevieve Carpenter. Number nineteen, Sarah Gray. Number twenty, Elizabeth Moore. Number twenty-one, Mariah Biscino. Number twenty-two, Emily Silver. Number twenty-three, Maya Martinez. Number twenty-four, Yana Kanika. Number twenty-six, Charlotte Carew. Number twenty-eight, Seneca Boykley Armitage. Number 29, Lindsay Jameson. Number 30, Amanda Kessler. And number 31, Sam Spear. From the support staff, the trainer, Stephanie Diebecker. The assistant coaches, Chaz Allen, Al Lowe. Wilson Maderos and Chip Cover. And finally, the head coach of the William Smith Herons, Allison Wilter. And now we present a runner up trophy to the William Smith Herons. Number 25, Brooke Firestone. 